All right, it's week five of our Influencer Series where we're learning how to use who we are and what we have to help others be and do what God created them for. So today, out of 2 Timothy chapter 4, I want to read verses 1 through 8 to you. Now, I want you to understand a little bit about this letter. Um, Paul is writing to Timothy, a young man that he's raised up in the faith. He's now sent out into ministry. He believes in, he is encouraged, he has equipped, and, and he's out serving. And so now Paul is, is writing this letter. It's actually... Um, you know, one of the pastoral epistles, it's one of the, one of the pastoral letters, uh, the, the letters to Timothy and Titus are you, write, written to young pastors, really encouraging them in the faith. And so um, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 says this, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word. By the word, the word, the word there, preach, means to proclaim. It's not about being on a stage. It's not about being in front of a large crowd. It's about being a person who is a proclaimer, who makes the proclamation of Jesus Christ. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and understanding. Um, reprove is an is a idea of to correct um, Reproach is stronger. Like, hey, you've been corrected and you still didn't get it right. Exhort is correction with encouragement. Um, it's kind of like do all of these things, but be patient and with teaching. So in those that we're influencing, we have to make sure that we're patient with them, but we're also teaching. We're not just expecting, but that we keep teaching the truth. Parents, that's a huge principle. It's patience and teaching at the same time. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. And having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. And then he says this, for I am already being poured out as a drink offering and the time of my departure has come. He's talking about his own death. I have fought the good fight. I've finished the race. I've kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to those who have loved his appearing. I want to encourage you with that last part, man. As you're being found faithful in your influence for Christ, man, just remember eternity and the rewards of Christ, that those things, those, those battles that we're facing day in and day out, the fights that we're fighting, the, the races that we're running um, for Christ, that, and that has a beautiful goal and promise out there in eternity with Christ. But here's the, the principle for today if we're gonna be influencers. It's this, real influence is when the life, life lived matches the truths proclaimed. When the life lived matches the truth pro proclaimed. You know, in, in, first, in 2 Timothy 3, just before this, if you go back to verse 10, he says, you, however, have followed my teaching, my conduct, my aim in life, my faith, my patience, my love, my, my steadfastness, my persecutions and sufferings that happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, and at Lystra, which persecutions I endured, yet from all the Lord, yet the Lord has rescued me. But here's what he's saying. You have you followed my teaching. You have followed my conduct. You have followed my, my aim in life, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfastness. Like he'd seen all this. You'd seen him go through the persecution. You'd seen him live his life. So the things that Paul is saying lines up with the things that Paul has been living. Now, one of the things that we have to, really challenge ourselves with in today's culture is this idea that we are gospel driven because we're good. You know, like our, our moral goodness builds our capacity for, to, for influence. But our moral goodness is never going to be the influence of the gospel of Christ. Our words have to speak to the truths which we're living. We have to put our words behind our actions. 
No, I've been really challenging. You have to have the actions. You have to live out this faith. It has to be true of you. It has to be real in you. You can't fake it. But, but here's the deal. Living a life that honors the Lord in all of these good and right decisions that you make, but never speaks the hope of Jesus Christ or, or the salvation that's found in him, that never tells the gospel, the good news, this good news that, that we have a savior, that the Lord Jesus Christ lived on this earth without sin, died on a cross that we deserved and was raised from the dead so that we might have life in him, that if people would put their faith and trust in him, that they would be saved. If we do not share that good news, we're missing the point of, of influence. Like our, our, our goal is to influence people for Christ. That's why Paul said, be imitators of me as I imitate Christ. It's all about Christ. It's not about us. It's not just about good things. It's not just about moral things. It is about the Lord Jesus Christ and the gospel. And he says to be ready in season and out of season to do all of these tough things. So there's a few things real quickly. Being ready is the result of being real. Um, it's real grace. You have to really believe in it. And you have to really receive in it to rightly proclaim it. Like you have to believe in grace in your own life. You have to believe in grace in, in the lives of others. You have to apply it to yourself and to others around you. There has to be a real faith. You have to actually trust Jesus if you're gonna share the truth. Like here, here's what I mean by that is, Apollos planted and Paul watered, but it's God who brought the harvest. So we plant, we water, God brings the increase. We have to trust this. Be found faithful with it. Your faith is in him, not in your own words. Um, real life, you have to live the joy of the changing power of God's grace in your life so that you can be this witness. Being ready is the result of being real. The other thing is being ready is the result of getting ready. If you're gonna be ready in season and out of season, this is what it means at any time, right? You know, like uh, athletes have an off season and then they have a season, right? Um, Man, are you living the kind of life that even in the off season, you stay ready? Like professional athletes don't like just eat king cake and everything for six months and then all of a sudden be ready to play. Like they have to take care of their bodies, right? We have to take care of our faith and be ready in season and out of season at any time. So here's a few things that you need to be doing to get ready. Study God's word, like learn it. Not just to know it, but to do it. Connect with believers. Spend time with other believers, growing in your faith in groups. Um, do not neglect the gathering of the saints. It's an important thing. Connect with other believers. Worship regularly. You know, it talks us to sing a new song, to extol the Lord, right? I mean, not just at church, not just on Sundays. Like, have a discipline of worship in your life. Read the Psalms and praise the Lord. Um, pray unceasingly. Just pray. Find just a pattern of prayer in your life. Fast, periodically, regularly. Learn how to, to give up things that are normal for you so that you can be hungry for the Lord, so you can hunger and thirst for righteousness. Memorize the word of God. Hide his word in your heart that you will not sin against him. Like, yeah, we hear about these things, but do them. If you're gonna be ready in season and out of season to speak and preach the word, to share the reason that you have a hope, to give an answer for the hope that you have, which first of all, like we've already talked about it, that, that you're gonna be living your life in such a way that it's causing people to ask questions about the hope you have. Are you ready to give an answer about the hope that you have? And so that comes down to getting ready. Be in the word, be growing, be with believers, worship, pray, fast, memorize God's word. Just add these disciplines and delights into your life. Some things to consider. What is one discipline spiritually, whether it's Bible study, scripture memory, any of those things that you really need to focus on and how can your group help you do that? Um, what part of speaking your faith in the gospel is the most intimidating to you? Is there a particular area that you know you really need to study and grow in? Maybe somebody in your group already has learned some things in that and can be helpful to you. The, the last one is this. In my spiritual life, um, Am I going to lean in to being a learner and a hearer of truth more than a doer? Am I doing that? Like, here's, here's what I mean. Many people have lived a life in, in church and in instruction of scripture. But man, if we're not careful, we study it for the sake of studying it, not for the sake of living it. And we, we really have to be practitioners 
of the faith. So one, one of the things we have to kind of learn about ourselves, some of us are just kind of more naturally theoretical people. Some of us are more application oriented people. And, and so we have to learn how to, to do both, to, to really consider the truths and the beauty of them, but then also the practices and the work of those things. So I really want to challenge you and encourage you, man, are the words of your mouth lining up with the convictions of your heart and the life that you're, you're living? And the, the truths proclaimed and the life lived need to match up for the purpose of the gospel. Be an influencer.